So, uh, so welcome everyone. We have like several visitors or several several people that are that are new in town. Um, Roger, is that right? Roger, and then Eric. You have some friends also, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and your parents. Okay. Well, welcome. Well, it's uh, it's good to have you guys here. And then uh, and then Rafi and Mavsut have some family also. And what are your what are their names? Uh, my name is Sunil, and her name is Najimal. Sunil and Najimal. Najimal. Well, welcome. It's good to have you guys, um, and it's good to see see everyone uh, returning once again. So um, this morning, I since we have just a little shorter time, I we won't go too too deep into things, but I want to share just a little things that have been on on my heart and mind lately. As some of you know, Michelle and I will make a return visit soon back to the states. And I've been getting ready just uh, for things with that. So the next, next, I don't know, when, while I teach in here until then, I'll probably be sharing things as I'm preparing for back at the States in terms of what uh, we're looking at with uh, church planning and discipleship. And a lot of it's like things I already talked to you about since I really love talking about empowering others just in our walks with Christ. Um, so, so I'll be looking at that some. And I've called it just Replicate is a series on being a, a kingdom movement uh, where we're replicating other disciples, we're replicating organic communities and churches. Um, so that's what we'll be, be sharing this morning. And just recently, this last week, um, as I was thinking about things, it just kind of clicked on me that this week, I think it's this week specifically, but it marks three years when Michelle and I first came to Soy 4 on our survey trip when we were invited to first come to join Soy4 in a short-term role and to visit the church. I think it was, it was this time three years ago because our son, the first Sunday we were here, they showed the camp video then and um, the Avengers, the first Avengers was about to come out. I'm a big comic fan, so I was really excited about that. And, and I taught in this room for like the first time with you guys. So here are some of us there. And I think some in the group at the time uh, weren't, weren't baptized yet. Some of you maybe weren't didn't live here yet. Um, so just kind of cool throwback to see, um, you know, what's happening with our, with our group of foreigners within this congregation is always a, always a neat and exciting thing. So, and, um, and I love just too how active you guys are as well in the church, um, which is an important thing in the kingdom. Um, you know, as Church of Christ, we believe in everyone having their own ministry. Sometimes people, they talk about it as, as, I don't want to say something too fancy, but like plurality of priesthood, or everyone has a priestly ministry, you know, because we don't have one person that's pope or priest, right? Because we believe we all intervene in our relationship to God, right? Jesus has opened us up to that. And all of us as members, we all um, are called to our own ministries. And I think that you guys do a great job of that here. And, and I'll share a little bit more of that later on. So, um, so for us, as we go, as Michelle and I, as we look forward and doing things, and really, um, as I've been studying, you know, I studied, it's kind of boring, but in America, I studied mission work in school and Bible stuff, and a lot of people write about it. As I mentioned, you know, there's endless books about it, but really, they all talk about a similar thing, and in today's world, as uh, we look forward, one of the things that we realized that we needed is sustainable methods, right, and looking at ch uh, helping churches grow in a way that will last having fruit in this world that, that lasts and sustains itself, right? Um, that God is leading through his spirit. And as we look at that in scripture, uh, we normally draw out about seven stages of this. And that has to do with preparing the soil. You know, as we go into a place where we're spiritually preparing that area for God, we plant the, we plant the seed of the gospel as it takes root um, in that community and digging deep, roots that as a church we're we're connected with our communities our community knows us we're familiar with social uh, and spiritual needs within our communities um, and growing out strong branches we talk about growing up as disciples that we're we're growing in our leadership and we're growing in our in our ministries as we reach out into these communities um, to the glory of god and ultimately we want to be people that are producing fruit 
And this fruit is in terms of, like we talked about in the past, disciples. We ultimately want to be making disciples that make disciples that are gathering in congregations. And as we do this, we're living in organic body life together. We're sharing life together as a church and as a family, as a mature body. And then the last and ultimate goal is, is to replicate. Uh, we produce, um, we replicate it. We plant new churches. We plant more organic communities. So uh, we'll be looking at some of these. I don't know if I'll be able to go through all of them, but this has to do with like the forerunner before that. You know, as we talk about the church, um, and as we talk about life in general, one of the things that we often, um, it's important for us to think about is, what's the point? Um, I recently watched a video. Um, it was a young girl. She has a YouTube channel. And she mentioned, you know, what is the meaning of life? Uh, what is the meaning of life? And sometimes, uh, sometimes people get really down on, I don't, just life doesn't have purpose. <laughs> you know, what are we here for, um, right? Sometimes we get the, the headache, you know, what is, our, what is our purpose? What are we here for? And it's important to know our purpose because without our purpose, without knowing the purpose, we're not going to fulfill it, right? <laughs> we don't know the goal. We're not going to meet it. And, and as a church, we need to know the purpose for for us as a church as well, right? Um, what is our purpose um, as the body of Christ? And so I want to sh- talk about this a little bit this morning to semi just kind of clarify these things a little bit. Um, I think sometimes as we think about, I sorry, put this up. Let's go back real quick and we'll talk for a second. So as we think about purpose um, and our goal as Christians, what would you guys say that that is? What comes to mind? We should be a, we should be examples. You can just say like something, something short. Uh, so example evangelism. Okay, so so it's it's following God's will. Yeah, it's a broad it's a broad thing. Some other things. Uh huh. Reaching others. Let's get some more. You can just spit it out. Uh huh. Service and showing love. This is really good. Sharing experiences. It's really interesting. Mm-hmm. He was an itinerant preacher. Yeah. Um, as he enters the synagogue that first time, you know, he talks about how he's going to be engaging in liberating the captives. Um, these are all really good. You know, we might say, you know, we need to uh, be gathering, you know, come to church. Uh, we know we need to be in our, in our Bibles, right? Um, we need to be giving, um, sharing time together. A lot of times when we talk about um, these things, we look at this, and sometimes... <laughs> We see, it as our, we see it as our one goal. And one danger, like Mark said, is sometimes when our only goal is reading the Bible, let's say, you know, we say ultimately our end result, we want to be, have people reading the Bible. And it's good to read the Bible, right? Is it good to read the Bible? <laughs> it's good to read the Bible, right? But does everything it means to be a Christian mean read the Bible? No. You know, it's good to sing songs of praise, of encouragement to one another, right? But... Does all it mean to be a Christian is singing songs? No. So when our, when our goal, when we don't see the full purpose, sometimes we can miss it. <laughs> you know, if, if we're shooting for the full purpose and all it is is, oh, I just need to sing, you know, how great thou art. And then we wonder, oh, why aren't things going in my life like this says it should? We can get frustrated and upset when we don't see the results in our life that we see we should have in Scripture when our goal isn't as big as what God calls it to be. And when our goal isn't, that mark that God has set out for us. So uh, I think ultimately one, one area where we get things uh, confused in this, um, especially, is our mission as a church and our purpose. And I feel like they're very similar, um, but it's a little different. Um, like Mark just mentioned, I want to clarify that some. I would say ultimately our mission as a church, we know it, a lot of you touched on that, um, is, is discipleship, right? As you look at John or Matthew 28, you can turn open there, but as Jesus talks about how he has all power and authority, he commissions the church, right? Um, He says, you know, all things have been given to me. 
You know, he knows that he's the creator of all things. He holds all things together. So he says this, he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He says, you bring them to my fold. They're going to be my possession, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He says, you teach them to observe. That means you teach them to care about everything that I've taught you to care about. And he says, remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. He says, remember that in this mission, I'm always there with you. You're not honored alone. I'm your, I'm your support team. I'm your ground force. And this is our mission. And we see this had a notepad, but we see this other place as well. When you look at Mark 16, you think about um, John 13, as he says, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. And it says, by this, all people will know that you are my what? That you are my disciples if you love one another. So this also has to do with fulfilling this mission. Um, this is an objective, right? It is discipleship. And in this love for one another, how we're living out our discipleship and bringing others into God's fold. Now that's our mission, but in reality, our purpose, it's wider than that. Um, because this, pur this purpose, when we think about it, this goal is new in the overall plan of God, right? Um, for Moses, could he fulfill this objective? Could he fulfill this mission? No, right? Could Jesus himself really even? Not exactly. Like, like what Mark said, we see early in the book of Mark, it says Jesus went about preaching and teaching the kingdom of God was coming near, right? So he's telling people to repent. But he was fulfilling God's purpose. He was fulfilling his will. But this is the, our mission now. So, um, so the overall purpose is much broader. And I want to talk about that a little bit here. Can I, it's really good you mentioned that because sometimes we get uh, fixated on this mission and then it takes on a life of its own. Mm. But if we don't put it in the greater context like you're doing now of the purpose, then even in our mission, even in doing the right, wanting to do the right thing, it can lead us astray and we can miss the big exactly. picture. Exactly. So I think it's really important because there's a lot of other, there's a lot of groups out there who are very active in their mission. Mm -hmm. The Mormons, they're very active in their mission and yet mm -hmm. a little concerned about the overall purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And thank you, Mark, for that reminder. And that, that's why I want to talk about this is as we talk about anything within the church, you know, ultimately wouldn't be funneling up to this purpose. And that's praise and glory to God. Um, and our, is what we're doing as disciples, is it bringing praise and glory to his name? And, a, and a, our steps along the way is it helping us get there, basically. Um, so as we, as we look at this, um, I want to, you can turn to the book of Ephesians. I want to look at a passage in Ephesians because a lot of the New Testament is about this. We'll see it in a little language, but I think that what Paul says at the beginning of Ephesians especially emphasizes this point in God's overall plan uh, for man um, and his purpose for the ages. So um, in Ephesians chapter 3, if you can look, um, just look here at your Bibles as you turn it open. Um, mine as you look through 3 through 14. I'll go ahead and read that. And just to give you a little context, when Paul wrote this letter, to the Ephesian church, this is one big subject. Um, some of your Bibles might have a note, but um, verses 3 through 14 in Greek is one whole sentence, um, is one sentence, um, which is long, right? Um, I teach English sometimes. I was an English major, but I know, what a, I know a run on sentence when I see one. <laughs> you ever heard of a run on sentence? <laughs> you know, it's like, and they went to the store to go buy some food and they walked over there, you know, it just like keeps going and going and going. You're like, all right, where's your period? Um, and Paul doesn't add a period. You know, Greek didn't use it, but the whole thought is just this one thing. And we're going to see this theme. Um, I want you to, I want you to, to focus for what, what overall theme do you see in this passage as we read through, okay? So starting in verse three, he says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavens in Christ. He chose us in him before the foundations of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted through Jesus Christ for himself, according to his favor and will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he favored us within the beloved. 
In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure he planned in him, for the administration of the days of fulfillment, to bring everything together in the Messiah, both things in heaven and things on earth in him. In him we were also made his inheritance, predestined according to his purpose of the one who works out everything in agreement with the decision of his will, so that he who laid so that he who had already put our hope in the Messiah might be might bring praise to his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in him when you believed, were sealed with that promised Holy Spirit. He is the down payment for our inheritance, for the redemption of the possession, to the praise of his glory. Um, so I want you to take just a minute and look over this passage. Um, you know, as you're looking at it in English, whatever language you're looking at there, um, Chinese or Udu, I don't know what you're looking at. Um, but um, as you're looking at that, um, what themes do you see pop out? What words are repeated there? What do you see as his overall point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he says he's talking about um, he's talking about choosing us. That's all leading up. There's like this usness there. I'll put us. Hopefully, this is try eraser. Okay, there's us. There's this theme of us as the church. In church, um, the Greek for church is ekklesia, which means the called out. It's like the chosen. So um, there's this chosenness there with that. So yeah, what else? What are other themes there? Yeah, there's a lot of blessing. <laughs> this, he says, every, you know, every blessing. And it's pregnant with blessing. Yeah, I like that. Blessing. Uh-huh, God's will. The will of God. Uh -huh. It all centers on Christ. I like that. Christo, sometimes we say Christocentric. It's all focused on Jesus. Okay, it all points to Christ. Anything else? The mystery of his will. Yeah, as it talks about, as it talks about will, it also talks about mystery. purpose, mystery. There is this revelation of this once this thing that was once kept hidden um okay one more thing there's one more thing missing there it's another big one when we look at christ too it, it repeats the term in him in him we have these things as it's all focused on christ but then another thing is glory right um there's this theme of of glory um look here look back with me as it talks about um, leading up to just that, that last verse in verse 14, it says um, that he is a down payment of our inheritance. That's the Holy Spirit for the redemption of our, uh, the redemption of this possession to the praise and glory of God. Um, and then again in verse 12, it says, so that he who had already put our hope in the Messiah might bring praise to his glory. Um, so there's this emphasis on all these things. It talks about the overarching plan of God. Um, the goal was, the goal was to bless, to send the Spirit to empower the church to the praise and glory of God. I mean, I have this little picture on here that kind of gives a zoom out um, as Paul is explaining um, this overall picture, like what um, uh, Mick mentioned, the mystery. Sometimes, some Bibles might say secret, but normally, um, mystery. Paul will say it several times that it, this was once a, a mystery. People didn't know, right? And when they thought about, you know, one day that the Messiah will come, and he's going to do something. <laughs> um, they didn't know exactly, right? They wanted the kingdom of God, but they're like, you know, we're waiting for this Messiah. We're waiting for these promises to be fulfilled. They had this there, but it was all mystery. Mystery means question marks. They didn't know what was going on, basically, right? Um, but Paul is explaining 
this overall plan of God. And Paul says that it, it began before time did. That as, that as God looked at it, it wasn't like, oh yeah, you know, I think I'll make earth. You know, let's do it weird. You know, let's make light and darkness and then, then we'll do it this way. And now we'll make the planets. And oh, we might as well put people there, um, you know, and, and let them have free will and give them some trees. And then, oh, you know, let's give them some law. Let's see what happens. Oh, it looks like they're really bad. Let's keep fixing things. It wasn't just he's making it up as he's going along, okay? <laughs> um, some will say this, um, but he does, he's not making it up as he goes along. It says that God, God knew the plan before it began, that he'll create this world. He knew that we would fall as man, that he would have to send a promise, right, um, that was first given to Adam and Eve in the garden. And we see that promise renewed. Um, time and time again with Abraham, um, Isaac, uh, Jacob, and Joseph, right? And ultimately to the law. And there's all these prophets that talk still about this promise um, ultimately being fulfilled, where this heir, this son, will crush the head of Satan and unite us back again with God. And as this, as this passage points at, the goal of it all, everything is pointing to Jesus, right? The plan is fulfilled in Jesus. Some scriptures will say that his death one time for all time saved us, right? It was a cosmic event. It changed all time everywhere. Um, so there, and that now, um, after the cross, we can come to him. We can now be fully connected with God, um, the church here in this world. So there's the, this overall plan that's revealed, basically. This thing that was once a mystery. Mm hmm <laughs> um, I don't want to get into a whole topic of predestination because that's like, Calvin. you know, there's a huge um, area to talk about that. But I think that what he's getting at here is this, um, that he's saying that, yeah, you know, before time, before anything, I knew that I wanted the church. Um, and I don't, I personally don't think um, that that means that, that, um, that, that means that, you know, Michelle and Karen are going to be saved, but that, you know, whoever, Mot that sells, guy taught out there, wasn't chosen, so they're never going to be saved. Um, some will believe that. But I think that he's saying that this whole plan, God knew of it. Yep. Okay? Does that make sense? There's my short answer. <laughs> um, okay? Because some will say, you know, as you ask, some will say, some will never, ever be saved yep. because God never wanted them to be. And we don't see that in Scripture because we yep. see that God is patient, wanting all to come to know him. I think we need to be careful about reading a word and reading meaning into that word because we hear predestination and we think certain things. But let the Bible de define itself. Mm -hmm. And Jesus calls us to repent. Mm -hmm. So there's an aspect where we can change. And yet at the same time, he knew it before it happened. So there's an aspect of foreknowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, um, so, as we, so as we look at this, um, this was once a cloudy mystery. You know, some people are like, you know, why Moses? Why the law? What's the deal? These prophets, what are they talking about the Messiah? Paul's saying, you know, here's the big picture. Basically, that Jesus would come, he'd start the church. For us, we're like, yeah, you know, that's easy. <laughs> but it was once a mystery hidden for ages, okay? Um, and you'll see that other places. So um, this comes from a study. If you want to see more about it and outlining scripture that I can, I have some printed off in the office that I can give to you. But, um, but I wanted to show this, that this is, this is that plan. Um, and ultimately, he's saying, you know, God's doing these things because he wants praise and glory to his name. We say that in the Old Testament. This theme is, is solid throughout all scripture. You know, as God says, um, you know, I'm going to empower you, the few, to shame all these others for the praise and glory of my name. <laughs> Not so that you as Israel will be known, but so that my name will be praised, right? Um, and for us as a church, that, that purpose is still there. Um, look more... Uh, just a couple places, these other verses I have. Verse 22, um, later on, he says, he's talking about the church um, founded on Jesus as our cornerstone. In verse 21, it says, the whole building, oh, wait a second. Head over the church. Um, I'm sorry, verse, I'm in the wrong chapter here. Um, he's put everything under his feet um, and appointed him as a head over everything for the church. So it's just like we saw in Matthew 
28, he says, I have all things and I'm going to bless you with it. I'm going to use these things for you. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Um, so in verse 23, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. So we as a church here on earth, we reflect the fullness. We should reflect the fullness of Christ Jesus lived out. And look over here in chapter 3, verse 10, as he talks again about, um, about Christ um, in this mystery revealed. It says in verse, I guess, chapter 3, verse 8, he says, this grace was given to me. Um, Paul's talking about being able to understand this mystery because to him it was especially revealed. Um, the least of all the saints proclaimed to the Gentiles the incredible riches of the Messiah and to shed light for all about the administration of the mystery. The administration of the mystery, we're talking about is this big picture basically um, of these times um, before, of this mystery that was hidden for ages in God who created all things. It says this is so that, that means purpose, this is so that God's multifaceted wisdom may now be made known through what? The church. Through the church. He says, this is so that all of this is so that it can be made known to all creation through who? The church. The church. He says he's chosen the church, okay? Uh, be made known through the church to the rulers and authorities of the heavens. So the effect, therefore, is cosmic. It's a huge effect on all of creation. So that has to do with our, with our purpose. It's praise and glory to God. This is, why, this is why he sent his son. It's to individually save us, yes, but it's to, to establish his church to the praise and glory of his name so that we can redeem all things back onto God. Um, so as we look at our purpose, when we think about, you know, what is our, what is our purpose? Let me erase some of this. Um, it addresses the question of, of why. <laughs> You know, when we, when we want to know, are we, are we connecting our purpose? Are we fulfilling our purpose? For some of you in, our, in your, like, business, you know, you might have a, a mission statement, a vision statement. Um, you want to know why. Are we doing what we're doing? Um, so that's what that has to do. Why? Why are we doing this? Um, the answer is uh, praise and glory to God. And when we think about our mission as a church, that's our how, um, like what we talked about, Okay. So our purpose, the why, is to bring praise and glory to God. When we do things as a family, we do things individually, um, we can ask this question. <laughs> are, we, are we answering the why in our lives? Um, when we look at our mission, um, how are we doing it? Are we engaging? Um, how are we doing this? It's making disciples of the nation. We see that Jesus opens us up to a lot of options. <laughs> There's a lot of ways um, on how to do this. Um, but ultimately, all things that we do should be connected, um, we see, with our mission and our purpose. And I really like what Paul says here in Colossians. Um, Colossians chapter 3, and verse 17, as he says, Whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Um, this, you know, this is one place where Paul talks about this, but he talks often about Take, taking hold of the opportunity, living intentionally. And as Christians, we're called to this intentional life, right? We're not just like, oh, I'm just doing this, YOLO here, you know, you only live once here, might as well throw it all away here. You know, we're driven people. We have a purpose. Um, so whatever we do, we should be able to do it to the praise and glory of God. Um, you know, whether that's our work, our time with our families, our time out with, for fun. Um, last night, I went to a bike event I like cycling, um, and there was a cycling event at Siam Square, um, which isn't that far from here. So I was like, yeah, I'll go. And, and I was hoping to race. Um, They're going to have a messenger bike, like mimic race. And I was like, I might do it because I saw one before that I wish I had entered in, and they're going to have a sprint race. So I went out to the race, and I competed. And you know, while I'm at these things, you know, am I reflecting? One of the questions I, that we need to be asking ourselves is, am I here at this place reflecting God? Am I bringing praise and glory to his name? And if the answer is yes, that means that doors are open for us to fulfill the mission. Um, if we're bringing praise and glory to his name, God's going to open up opportunities for us to fulfill that mission. Doors are going to open up. Um, so we as a church, I come back to this picture, um, we as a, per, as a church, that goal is lifting up Christ, right, and our city.
here in Bangkok, um, wherever it is that wherever it is that we are, we're lifting up Christ um, to the praise and glory of God as we take hold of that mission and reaching out to this world around us. Um, and I think that that um, we as a church. Um, we're doing a good job at this. <laughs> um, we do this. Um, you know, we encourage one another and we, and we take hold of ministry as God puts it before us. Um, but we, oh, let me see here. As um, we take hold of opportunities as we see God put them before us and and, uh, and people see that. It brings praise and glory to his name. Recently, I want to share um, something with you guys. Here it is. Um, recently, someone that we, that we know from the States um, visited here and from the Christian Chronicle. This is a Church of Christ publication. And um, to tell some of the story of, of, of you refugee families um, and what you've um, endured here for your faith. Um, and many people, um, people wrote us and gave feedback and they said, you know, we were so, we were so encouraged and uh, by their faith um, that people were put, people were put behind um, bars, right? Um, you were in prison and, um, and your faith was shared um, around the world. Um, and people were encouraged. They said, you know, we need to do a better job of taking hold of this gospel. Um, so simply by bringing praise and glory to his name, um, we have encouraged others. You've encouraged others to do the same. Um, so there, there were several articles um, mentioned and in the, in the States, um, you know, it was printed out. We might be able to um, get these printed here so you guys can, can read and see, but it's really beautiful and, and powerful story. And then, um, and as well, I was very proud of, of our congregation here because many of you are always so willing to to serve as we have the as we have the need you know many of you come and say how can i help do you need funds do you need me to go what do you need um and we need funds you know you guys give um when we need we're like you know we need help we need to go take food we want to stay with these people you guys are willing um to go and to do and to give and to bless um so here's here's us with the pizza party um remember when um, when they were first arrested, um, some of the families couldn't come. So we said, uh, you know, church isn't about a place. So we said, you guys can't come to church. Church is coming to you, <laughs> right? Um, so we went and we had, we church together and we had a little pizza party um, with your family and then uh, with your girls too, as they were with um, Aisha and your dad. Um, so I mentioned some of those things, um, some of those things there. So. Um, just really encouraging um, and proud of, we're proud of just our congregation because as we look, we never know um, what task God puts before us. We never know what road he's going to lead us down, but we need to be willing um, and open to that will um, and saying, God, you know, use me. And I just wanted to say that I'm proud of, um, I'm proud of you guys um, and your willingness to be used by God. Um, and I hope and pray that we as a church can continue to look at ways that we can bring praise and glory to his name as we take hold of his mission here in Bangkok. Um, so let us go to God in prayer, and then we'll be done for the morning.